Hi, my name is Met Hatel Masri. Today I'm going to show you how you can localize an ASP.NET Razor Pages application. We will localize our application so that it works in English, French, German, and Chinese. So let us get started. I will be using .NET Framework 6.0. So the command I will use to create my application is .NET New Razor minus F for the framework. And the framework I'm targeting is .NET 6.0. The output directory is going to be Razor International. I'm going to go into that directory and in here I'm going to make a couple of folders. The first folder I want to make is a models folder. I want to also make a resources folder and also a services folder. Now we'll go into the resources folder and in here I want to make a couple of other directories. One is for pages and the other is for models. So I'll be going back into the root directory and let me open up my source code in VS Code by typing code dot. This opens up VS Code and as you can see, we created these folders, one for models, another for resources and inside resources we have models and pages and we also created a folder called services. Since we are going to use a couple of namespaces in our pages, we will go into the pages, view imports and add some namespaces that we want to use in our pages. So we will need these namespaces and they are system globalization, Microsoft extensions localization, Microsoft ASP.NET Core MVC localization and Microsoft ASP.NET Core localization. You can see that the majority of them, in fact, all of them have to do with localizing your application. And in a similar manner, we will create a global usings file so that these namespaces are also available to our classes. So I will close this and go in here and create a new class and I will call that global usings. So in my global usings file, I will add this code. Essentially, I am making available all these namespaces, the same namespaces that I had in my view imports. I'm making them available to my classes in global usings. And I add the global keyword here. In order for my application to support localization, I need to add some services in my program.cs file. I will add some code here and explain to you what it does. The first line indicates the folder in which I'm going to put my resources files. And the main folder is going to be this resources folder. So this is where that is being specified. Over here, I'm specifying the languages that my application is going to support. In today's exercise, I'm going to support English, German, French. I'm not going to do Spanish, so I can delete that. Same with Russian, same with Japanese, and same with Arabic. So the only languages I'm going to support today are English, German, French, Chinese, and American English. This is the language, and the extension you have here is the culture. So some English speaking countries, the currency they use is different. The units they use for weight or distances are different. So this hyphen with the code of the country shows the difference in culture. The next thing is we specify the default culture and the default culture is going to be English. The supported cultures is this array and the supported UI cultures, again, is the same array. Now, over here, we're going to add these services, MVC, view localization, and data annotation localization. Let us take a step back here and understand what are the things that we can localize in ASP.NET. Number one, you can localize classes. Number two, you can localize pages. 
And number three, you can localize data annotations. This caters for localization of your pages, and that includes the CSHTML file and the code behind. And here we're talking about razor pages. This pertains to the data annotations. One more thing we need to do in the program.cs is to add this code. And basically, this one is saying that we're going to add support to localization in our application. There is an important extension that I added to VS Code, and this would be it. This extension is important if you want to be able to follow what I'm doing. The RESX editor allows us to edit the XML file that contains the localizable strings. And we're going to create a resource file for every language that we are going to support. We will first localize Razor pages. Inside of our resources folder, in the pages folder, we're going to create a file called indexmodel.en for English dot R-E-S-X. Now, why do we call it index model? That is because our index page, if you go in here, the class name for our index razor page is index model. Therefore, we're going to mimic the location of the pages folder and this file, the index.cshtml.cs, and place it in the same tree structure, assuming that resources is the root. So this is where it would be. And now when you click on this file, it opens up this RESX editor. We're going to localize three strings here. The first one is welcome, and that will simply be welcome. And then we'll do another one, learn. And for learn, I will put the word learn here temporarily. But what I want to localize in this case is the string that exists in the index.cshtml, and it is this one here. So I'm going to copy this and go back into my resource file and put this here. The next thing I want to localize is a custom message. So I'm going to create a key message, and the value would be something along these lines. I hope you will enjoy the content of this site. Since I want to support three additional languages, which are French, German, and Chinese, I will take this file here, copy it, and paste it three more times. And this first one, I will rename it so that it pertains to the French language. So I'll change this to FR. And the second one, I will do the same thing. I'll rename this to German. And the code for Germany is DE for Deutschland. And the third one would be for Chinese. And I will rename this to ZH, which is the code for the Chinese language. We need to go into each one of these files and translate these texts into their respective languages. So in the case of German, the German for welcome is this. And the equivalent for the learn HTML is this. Now, I want you to just recognize that this is just a string, whereas this is HTML that we're putting as the value of learn. And the German version of the message, we're going to paste it with this. So we're done with the German. We're done with the English. Let's check the French. So the French welcome is Benvenue and the HTML would be this. And the message we want to translate will be this in French. Finally, we have the Chinese. The Chinese equivalent to welcome is this. The HTML would be this. And the message would be this in Chinese. Now, I don't know all these languages. I'm just using Google Translate to do the translation, and I just hope 
that the translations are correct. Let's make use of this in our page and specifically in our code behind. So I'm going to open up index.cshtml.cs and I'm going to start using the class that helps me do localization. This would be the iString localizer on this class index model and I'll call that local variable localizer. So now I'm going to use dependency injection to make this available in my class. I'm going to add this argument, call it localizer. And in here, I'm going to say underscore localizer equals to localizer. Now I have this object available for me. In my onGet method, I will try and display my message. So I will use this localizer to grab the message key and value pair from the resource files. So this is the message and I'm trying to grab that value from here and put it into view data message. Let me display this in the page. So let me open up index.cshtml. And so if I want to display the contents of this view data message, I can come down here and do something like this. I'll create a new paragraph and display this message. So let us start our application and see the results of what we've done. A quick way to see whether this is actually working is to type in the URL question mark culture equals to let's try French first and you will see it switched over to French. If we do German, it will switch over to German and if we do Chinese, it will display Chinese. So that is working. Now going back to our resource file, we were able to display this message. How about welcome and learn? Now there is something different between welcome and learn. Learn happens to be HTML and welcome is not. Let us display the values for welcome and learn inside of our index CSHTML page, which is different from what we did because what we just did was we localized in the class file. Now we're going to do it in the view file. So let's go to index.cshtml. Since we are about to localize a string and an HTML content, we're going to inject these two objects, string localizer of type index model and I HTML localizer index model too. But this one is an HTML localizer and this is not. So let's display the welcome message. So I can use this localizer object for that. So I'm going to go at localizer and the key would be welcome. For this HTML, I'm going to again use the localizer and the key would be simply learn because that was the key we used in our resource file. Now let's see if this is going to work. Let's refresh. If you refresh, it is picking up the right thing. We can try German. The only problem is this is not being converted into HTML. And that's because for the second part here, which is the learn, we have to use the HTML localizer because it has to convert the HTML into HTML in our page. So now let's come back here and you will see, yes, it is converting it to HTML. Let's try French and that looks good too. And Chinese looks good too. So we just succeeded in localizing the class and a view. Now, suppose you have a scenario where you have strings that are common to pages, to classes, to data annotations, and you don't want to have it bogged down to specific names of pages because if you take an example like the word delete or save or update or submit, these could be used on multiple pages. So in ASP.NET, there's the concept of a shared resource and a shared resource can be used anywhere in your application. So to create a shared resource, you create a class in the root of your application and you simply call it shared resource. By the way, you can call it whatever you want to call it. 
but I'm calling it shared resource here. You simply create a blank class like this. You don't even need to import anything. Let's keep it simple. Once you've done that, you will create a service that uses this to access the shared resource files. So in the folder of services, I will create a new C Sharp class and I will call it shared resource service. I will use the new syntax for namespaces and the code for my services class will be something like this. I need to resolve this assembly name. This also uses the iString localizer and this is the constructor. It uses a factory to create this shared resource based on the assembly name and it's just got one method. That method is just get, you pass it the key and it returns the localizer for that key. Before we can use it, we must make this service class available as a singleton so that we can inject it in our classes using dependency injection. That means I need to come into my program.cs file and add a singleton to the services. This is what we need to do. We need to resolve this. So here we're adding this service as a singleton. In order to use shared services, of course, we must have some resource files that we want to read from. And the resource files will be put in the resources folder, not in models, not in pages, but right in the resources folder. So let's create the first one. The first file, we will call it shared resource and let's do English. Again, we get this editor. I'm going to localize three strings. The first one is localization and the second one is privacy and the third one is success. Since I will need this same resource file for three additional languages, I'm going to do like what I did before. I'm going to copy this and paste it three times for the three additional languages. This one, I'll rename it to French and the next one, let's rename it to German and the last one we'll rename it to Chinese. I will translate all of these into their respective strings. So for the first one, German, these would be the translations and I will fast forward these translations so you don't have to sit down and watch me do something rather boring. So I just translated these shared resource files into German, into French, and into Chinese. To show you how shared resources can be used, I'm going to localize my main layout page, which is this one here under shared layouts. First thing is we need to inject this shared resource service into our layout.cshtml file. So I'm going to come here and inject this class. My local variable on this page is shared localizer. Let me first localize this line title. I'm going to change this. I will use the key localization and that would be right after the title. Down here on line 16, I will also replace this one with the same localized key. On line 27, which is this one here, I will replace the word privacy with the value for key privacy. And then down in the footer area, I will replace this here with localization and the privacy with this. Let's see if things are okay now and whether our home page has been localized. So now I'm going to go to my home page and there is a bit of a problem here with privacy. Let us check it. And this is because we have a quotation and a tag, a greater than. Let's refresh this and try our page again. Now, there's still a problem here. And I think it has to do with this. Let's try it again. I'll refresh this by hitting Control R. And let's go back here, get our page. And it's looking good. Let us change the culture to Chinese 
and you can see here that this has been localized, this has been localized, and also at the bottom here, this has been localized. So our shared resources are working as expected. The last thing I want to show you is how to localize data annotations. Now, data annotations can have validation messages, they can have display labels, and they can also have error messages. We have here a folder for models. I'm going to create a new model here, which I shall call contact. And in this contact class file, I'm going to add a contact. Put my semicolon here and let's resolve required. It doesn't seem to want to do it, but I know that I can just type it in system.componentModel and data annotations. That should take away the error. And if you look at this contact class, it only has an email field. Email is required and it has this error message. Email is certainly required. And this has to be an email address. So if the email is not a proper email address, then it will display an error message. Email is not valid. Let's change this to not valid. And then finally, the display should just say your email. We need to create resource file for this contact.cs file, and it has to mimic this tree structure. In other words, under resources, models, we would put the resource file for this model class. So that would be a new file, which we will call contact. Dot. We'll start with English.resx. The three keys that we want to have here are email is certainly required. And for English, we're just going to put the same thing there. And the next thing is email is not valid. And again, for English, it's the same thing. And finally, your email will add that key value pair too. As we did before, we're going to take this, copy it and paste it three times for the other languages and rename them back to the appropriate language codes. So this would be French and this one we'll rename it to German and the last one we'll rename it to Chinese. Let's translate all of these. I'm going to start with German and again I will fast forward so you don't have to watch me do this. Now I am back. I just translated the strings for contact into German, French, and Chinese. To test this out, we're going to create a new page in the pages folder. So I'm going to add a new razor page here, and I will call this contact page. We get two files. We get contact page.cshtml and contact page.cshtml.cs. What I'll do is I will go to the .cs page and I will add a binding property. It will look like this. It will be based on this contact class. I shall resolve this. So here I'm creating bind property and it's being bound to the HTML page. We need to have a form on the HTML page for this purpose. Let me replace all of this with my own code, which looks like this. So the model for this is nothing but the contact page class because these two are bound together. The title of my page is contact page and I'm going to display that in an H1 tag. Here's a hard rule. And then I have an H4 that displays the value of this view data result. If it's null, it displays nothing. Otherwise, it displays the content of this view data. Now, this is a form that submits to the contact page. It's got a validation summary here, and we just display one field, and that is the contact.email field. Then we have a submit button. Down here, we're using scripts to display the error messages. Now, this would submit to a method on the C Sharp class that is of type post. So we are missing a method here called on post. 
The own post method will look like this. It returns an I action result. First of all, we check whether the model is valid. In other words, if the data coming to this method is valid, if it's valid, we'll just return back the same page. Otherwise, we're going to display the results of this key, this success. We put it in the shared resource file. So if we go back here, we have this is a shared resource file. We need to have an instance of the shared resource service object. I'm going to add an instance variable here. First of all, let me resolve this. So I'm going to put comma and then shared resource service. Let me call this shared localizer. And down here, I'm going to set the underscore shared localizer to be shared localizer. This object is recognized. I can now test my application. Let's restart the server. So let's go to our contact page. Let me turn this into French. And these messages are coming from the data annotation. I can change my browser so that it is in French mode. So I'm going to look for languages and I've got French here, but it needs to be moved to the top. And that way my browser will be set up in French. Now, without even this, my browser is by default running in French mode. If I click on create, I get my messages coming from the data annotation. If I enter something that's not a valid email address, I get a French message saying this is not valid. And now if I enter a valid email address, notice that when I click on create, it's going to display a message in green at the top here. So I'm now clicking on create and this comes back from the server. I hope you found this useful and I look forward to hearing from you about any successes that you have made with regard to localizing your web apps. Thank you and I'll see you in the next video.